thank you everybody and welcome to uh, our portion of this event this, this weekend. And uh, we're going to start by uh, firing up our iPad and getting things ready that way so you can actually see some visuals as we start off our lecture. And uh, as was pointed out, we are from the Unarius Educational Foundation. Uh, Unarius is a nonprofit uh, foundation that is dedicated to helping educate humanity uh, to a different way of thinking, a whole new paradigm in the way of thinking, and recognizing that we are all energy beings, first, foremost, and, and lastly. We are energy beings, we're spiritual beings. And if we as souls can learn how we function as energy beings, then we can uh, develop our own consciousness to come in contact or make that contact much more developed, much more sure with the space brothers or the beings on these higher worlds, these interdimensional planes, and on the advanced physical planets. Uh, so Unarius, again, is an educational foundation that helps teach a, any soul how they themselves as an energy being works. And once we understand how we work, how our consciousness functions, we can make our lives that much better. I'm Kevin Kennedy, and this is David Reynolds. David, do you have anything you want to add? Well, <clears throat> most everybody is familiar with uh, modern-day electronics, the radio and television, et cetera, et cetera. Well, um, those principles that allow modern-day electronics to function, we function in the exact same way. The way that we ha uh, operate is in an energy being. That's our true nature. And when we die the physical death, is there any death? No. no. We continue on to a spiritual dimension where we further our own spiritual evolution and education. So the energy that we have in one lifetime, we carry from life to life. So if you have cancer or whatever debilitating incurable disease you have in one lifetime, the best results is if you go to the source of whatever the karmic situation is, the negative energy you put into your energy body, your energy body, and therefore when you deal with it, with your consciousness, with your proper understanding, that's, this is what Unarius teaches, you can cancel that energy out and you can be healed of the cancer or whatever you want to be healed of. And the karma that we carry from life to life is not permanent, we can cancel that energy out. Again, the same principles that allow radio and television to work, they are applicable directly to us. So, Unarius is not only uh, explaining how the universe works, it also is person-centered. We apply these energy principles to ourselves, but right now this focuses on opening a new cosmic window using Tesla technology. And Tesla had worked with these principles that we're talking about for many lifetimes. He's in a very, very advanced soul. And it's very important that with, what David was saying about this realization, because I, you, know, you meet so many people and they want to understand why, why we can have a Tesla. Why, why was Mozart writing symphonies at, at you know, four and five years old? You know, why was Einstein able to have these awarenesses and these uh, cosmic uh, consciousness-raising understandings of life when, you know, there's a bunch more people on this planet and why weren't we able to do that? Well, when you understand that each one of us is the result of what we have done through many, many lifetimes, then you begin to realize that it wasn't that God looked down and said, okay, Mozart, you're going to be able to write symphonies, and this person over here, well, you're not going to be able to do anything, and that person over there, you're just going to remain crippled the rest of your life. It's not that way at all. Each one of us has built up through this evolutionary process over many, many lifetimes all the things that make up who we are today. And if we understand that, then we can realize that Mozart could write symphonies at four, not because he was blessed by God, but because he developed that over many, many lifetimes. And it was second nature for him to sit down and begin to do these things, just like breathing was to you and I at four years old. You know, you didn't even think about it. So um, our, our talk today, as David uh, stated, is about Tesla technology, opening a cosmic window, inventing Earth's positive fusional foundation. It's, it's centered in uh, San Diego, California, actually a place called El Cajon, California. It's a little suburb, east, east county of, of San Diego Central. And we actually have our own uh, school there where we teach these principles of life and talk a lot about Tesla and other principles of energy, how energy functions. Uh, the founders of Unarius were Ernest L. and Ruthie Norman. They were cosmic visionaries. Go ahead. Uh, Ernest L. Norman was the uh, 
transmitter receiver for the first 20 volumes of the Anaris Educational Foundation. And this is Ernest Norman's, uh, or the Unarius Academy of Science, or the Unarius Educational Foundation. This is the core textbook that was transmitted uh, by the, the over self, the higher self of Ernest Norman. This is the core textbook that our physics needs to embrace in order to join spirit and science, in order to make our physics moral and character, uh, instead of the way it is now. Now, the same consciousness that overshadowed Jesus of Nazareth overshadowed Ernest Norman. So this is a brilliant work transmitted by his higher self. It was recorded audio, and we have it all digitized uh, now for sale if you would like it. But this is a must-have for the future physicists to understand how our universe works, how our galaxy works, and what is our purpose in life? And have we ever misused energy before in a previous life? Yes, we have. This is the core textbook. It's called The Infinite Concept of Cosmic Creation. Good. Try again. Thank you. So uh, one of Tesla's quotes that we love is this one right here. If you under, want to understand the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. Again, Tesla understood that all of us are energy beings. He used to say, I'm but a drop of energy in a vast sea of energy. And so are all of us. And if we can understand how we function in this vast sea of energy, we're going to learn how to swim better. And we're going to learn how to use our minds better. And we're going to work in harmony with the cosmos instead of against it, as we are in our present day society. Now, planet Earth is going into a new age. This has already been predicted eons ago, right? It's called the New Age of Spiritual Renaissance, or the Aquarian Age, whatever you want to call it. We're in the beginning phases of it. This planet that we call Earth is not the only planet going through a New Age transition. Right now, what you see going on planet Earth is a tremendous trans transformation from the old world thinking, the old world of karma, to a new way of thinking, a new age of spirit and science. This is the evolution that we're now entering into. So the new age that everybody has sort of read about, dreamed about, wished for, a way of living in harmony with the universe, we're going to need plenty of energy that is free of what? Pollution, contaminants, a te that technology that is um, in harmony with nature. And this is going to be the core of our talk today. And the future will be realigned with this positive understanding from the higher spiritual dimensions. Again, it was a part of his world system that he was proposing. Uh, and, and the quote at the bottom I love is, besides these that I refer to when we were talking about that early transmittal of power, uh, radio waves, uh, sending messages, a world clock that would be, you know, referenced from all over the world so everybody would be at the right time, the right, same right mm -hmm. time, whatever. Uh, he said, besides these, I refer to uh, other and incomparably more important applications of my discoveries will be disclosed at some future date. So here we are, a hundred years later, coming back around to recognizing that we have to do things in an intelligent way that does not pollute our world and works in harmony with the cosmos. And this is what Tesla talked about when he was inventing things. Uh, he, there are some conversations that I like to quote where he was talking to a fellow by the name of Lord Kelvin, who was a physicist in England, a very famous one, who talked to him about, well, until you get your world power tower going, we shouldn't be polluting our planet with coal and the use of fossil fuels to power automobiles. Automobiles were just coming into being at that time. We should be using solar and wind power because that doesn't pollute the environment. So... We were talking about this a hundred years ago, but it's taken us as a, as a humanity that long to come back around to realize that what we're doing to our planet, if it's not working in harmony with the cosmos, in harmony with nature, we're doing it to ourselves. That what we do understand is that he did come from a higher dimension, a higher world, go ahead. And because of his development over many, many lifetimes, it was second nature for him to draw down from that higher source, from that infinite intelligence, 
from, as we understand it, Indian areas, he was inspired and overshadowed by the Archangel Michael. That's why he could use his mind like so few people could. So what is an atom? An atom is an interdimensional cosmic centrifuge. It is the nucleus of what is happening on these inner worlds. You can call them inner worlds of light. Again, as David was saying a moment ago, our planet, you and I, we're the secondary effect of what's happening interdimensionally, you see, as it is with the atom. So the atom is constantly pulsing into this world, into this dimension, what it is being fed from that interdimensional vortex. Correct. You see, it's coming down. It's, imagine how it is stepped down from the sixth, you know, fifth, fourth, and then into the third dimension, carrying that information from that higher source into this world, into this dimension, from these inner worlds of light, you see, and expressing out into this is plain. And now, you and I are the same way. Let's talk about how the sun works. The sun works in the very same way Kevin was describing it. It's a step-down transformer. Okay? The sun is taking energy from the fourth dimension and reconverting it into energy and broadcasting it out. So each planet in our solar system gets exactly what its life forms need as heat and light and gravity. Gravity is an induced force. Light is an induced force. So when we, what they unfortunately did, the scientists who figured out how to split the atom, what they did is rip apart the uranium atom, the vortex. You might want to go back one slide if it's possible. Now, see that vortex, as Kevin said, was pulsing energy into this dimension that we considered solid, third dimensional atoms. Well, the uranium atom, the one that they found fissionable was what, U-238 or something like that? One of the isotopes? Not knowing this science that Kevin and I are talking about, the Unaria science of life, unknowingly the physics went down a wrong path. When they split the atom fis through fusion or fission, whatever method they're going to use, they rip apart that vortex and all that fourth dimensional comes slamming into this dimension. Now, the radiation is horrible. So whenever you do things that are out of harmony with infinite intelligence, usually there is a harmonic or an after effect that if it's negative, then you've got to re-examine what you're doing. So the after effect is this pollution of radioactivity. So uh, what we understand, what we've been given by the Space Brothers, by these beings who live on these other uh, planes, the more intelligent physical planets and the spiritual worlds, is that in our future, we will have one, pl uh, one power tower, the Tesla power tower is what it's going to be called, that can power the whole world with energy. And the way it's going to do this, and, and this is kind of my, my poor <laughs> illustration of this, However, what it's going to do is imagine, which is what they had in Atlantis, imagine a giant crystal pyramid in your head, more large than they have than you've ever seen in Egypt. And at the top of that, you have this ball that radiates out this, uh, ener these energy beams. Okay? Well, that covering, that covering of this pyramid is going to hold crystal uh, energy uh, retainers, absorbers, that are going to be able to take this energy information from the cosmos. Why go to the secondary source? Why go to wind? Well, another thing... You know, why go to the sun? Let's, let's go right to the interdimensional energies that are surrounding us all the time anyway. Another thing we could do is tap the sun's energy before it gets converted into the heat and light that you and I know about. Exactly. So that's what this power tower is going to do. And this is what they use on these other planets. They already have power towers in place to power their whole world with energy, non-polluting uh, energy that not only doesn't pollute, but also helps purify the atmosphere, pur purifies the whole environment. If you, and then, I'm sorry, Kevin. If you want to, if if any of you are a technical out there, our engineers, we have a booklet here, a pamphlet. Dr. Norman wrote called "Amid the Pyramids." It explains how the Atlantean power generators worked on the same principle that Nikola Tesla talked about. 